Good afternoon, everyone. This is the acromioclavicular case study. This is the shoulder girdle. The shoulder girdle, sometimes referred to as the pectoral girdle, is comprised of two clavicles and two scapulae. The clavicle is a slender S-shaped bone connecting the upper arm to the trunk and holding the shoulder joint away from the body to allow greater freedom of movement. The scapula is a large flat bone posterior to the rib cage, overlaying ribs 2 through 7, which also includes a glenoid cavity for the head of the humerus. Muscles acting on the shoulder girdle are trapezius, levator scapulae, rhomboid major and minor, serratus anterior, pectoralis major and minor, deltoids, teres major and minor, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, subscapularis, and latissimus dorsi. There are four articulations in the shoulder girdle. Acromioclavicular, sternoclavicular, glenohumeral, and scapulothoracic. This case study follows a 6 feet, 190 pound junior wide receiver in his third year of collegiate football. The athlete was tackled during practice while catching a pass. He landed on right shoulder and was slow to get up. After getting to his feet, he was favoring right arm when coming off the field. He was unable to finish practice. Notable signs were significant carrying angle, obvious step up deformity, and moderate edema. Palpation revealed sharp pain and tenderness with step off deformity and edema surrounding the acromioclavicular joint. Athlete experienced pain with glenohumeral glide, piano key sign, and acromioclavicular compression. Glenohumeral glide was negative for laxity, while piano key sign was positive for the up and down motion of the distal end of the clavicle. Grade 1. Slight tear or stretch of the acromioclavicular ligament. Grade 2. Tearing of two or three ligaments supporting the joint. Grade 3, complete rupture of all three ligaments. Athlete was prognosed with grade 2 acromioclavicular sprain due to positive acromioclavicular compression and positive piano key sign, indicating possible disruption in the coracoclavicular ligament. Initially, athlete is given ice and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories for pain and edema with arm sling to limit shoulder movement. This rehabilitation will follow a sequential order of pain management, improving range of motion, regaining strength, proprioception, and force production. Week 1 rehab focused on pain and edema management while keeping the shoulder joint immobilized to allow proper healing. Upper body ergometer was modified to pain tolerance. Athlete completed a 180 degree half revolution cycle back and forth at 20 degrees of shoulder flexion. In order to avoid muscle activation in right shoulder, the athlete is passively abducting the right shoulder with assistance from the left arm and crutch. The left arm uses the crutch as leverage to push the right shoulder into abduction in a slow, controlled motion. This exercise should be done to pain tolerance. In order to avoid muscle activation in right shoulder, the athlete is passively flexing the right shoulder with assistance from the left arm and crutch. 
the left arm uses the crutch as leverage to push the right shoulder into flexion in a slow controlled motion. This exercise should be done to pain tolerance. In order to avoid muscle activation of right shoulder, the athlete is passively externally and internally rotating right shoulder with assistance from the left arm and crutch. The left arm uses the crutch as leverage to push the right shoulder into external rotation and pull it into internal rotation in a slow controlled motion. This exercise should be done to pain tolerance. Wall crawls are another type of exercise that helps increase range of motion. The athlete actively walks the fingers up the wall in a slow and controlled manner to 90 degrees of shoulder flexion or to pain tolerance. The athlete then slowly walks the fingers back down the wall to starting position. To establish full range of motion, athlete received a cortisone shot on Tuesday of week 4 and was immediately given a pulsed ultrasound treatment for 5 minutes to increase circulation of medication and continue tissue healing. Athlete was able to perform a 10 minute warm up in standard motion on the upper body ergometer and was given ice to go. By Thursday, athlete was cleared for non-contact practice and on Saturday, Marcane injection was given 25 minutes before game time for pain management. Athlete will perform wall crawl exercise from weeks two and three in same manner. Weights have been added as a form of resistance to help improve muscular strength. Week 4 saw the athlete progress to ball catches, allowing athlete to perform motions similar to wide receiver position. Athlete will catch ball at various heights in a quarter squat stance. After reevaluation, Athlete had much improved range of motion with no pain. More active strengthening exercises were implemented. Athlete lay supine with shoulder at 90 degrees of flexion. Athlete performs an abbreviated punch towards ceiling while keeping head and back on table. Make sure athlete uses scapular protraction and retraction to help perform motion. This can be done by placing the hand under the scapula to ensure exercise is being done properly.
This is a resistance exercise for shoulder internal rotation. Athlete will start with shoulder at neutral, then will internally rotate to end range and return to neutral position while keeping wrist firm and straight. This is resistance exercise for shoulder external rotation. Athlete will start with shoulder at neutral, then will externally rotate to end range and return to neutral position while keeping wrist firm and straight. Athlete will assume push-up position on wall and have body weight fall toward hands, allowing chest to touch the wall. Athlete will then slowly push away to upright position. Difficulty increases with foot positioned further away from the wall. With pain management no longer an issue, the athlete was progressed to mostly strengthening exercises. This is a standard strengthening exercise in which the athlete concentrically and eccentrically activates shoulder muscles using a dumbbell. The athlete follows a set pattern of flexion, scaption, and abduction. To re-educate proprioceptors and improve kinesthetic awareness, the athlete lays supine with shoulders at 90 degrees of flexion. Athlete will isometrically contract while resisting manual force from different directions. This exercise is a variation of rhythmic stabilization. Athlete will rotate physio ball under palm in a clockwise and counterclockwise interval. The final exercise has the athlete generating force by tossing the physio ball or weighted ball upwards to improve muscular strength. This is a one-handed variation of the previous exercise. Athlete catches ball and thrusts it upwards. This is a great and fun exercise I thought should be incorporated into the last week of the rehab. It improves range of motion, stability, and muscular strength, amongst other things, that are beneficial to a wide receiver. And that's all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking the time out to view my podcast. Hope you enjoyed it and found it informative.